Okay, so my name is Sai. I run a little organization for people who create languages. What the hell does creating languages mean? Well, um, it's sort of a hobby for some people. Some of you are probably going to be familiar with it through stuff like Quenya, aka Elvish, or Lord of the Rings um, fandoms. There's Klingon, there's other stuff. I'm going to get to in a minute. But basically, it's not the same as, you know, C. It's a real language. There is a couple of broad categories of conlangs. One is you can do it based on something that already exists. So you take something and you run with it. You take English and you modify it to do something cooler than English. The other version is you just make shit up from scratch. Um, for example, Lojban does this. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but Basically, you need a little bit more of a knowledge of linguistics to be able to do this route. Artlang is, the, is probably the most popular kind of language. It's basically something where you do it because you want to. Uh, you do it for artistic expression. There's lots and lots and lots of artlangs in the, in the world right now. Augslangs, however, have much, much more speakers. Esperanto is definitely the most well-known. It's got quite a damn lot of speakers. Um, however, there are some squabbles over what exactly makes for the best language for everyone to learn. Philosophical languages are a little bit more removed. They're not really caring so much about whether someone's going to learn them or not. They're more to prove a point of some sort philosophically. Yes, that is an accurate translation, I promise you. It is that crazy. Engineered languages usually are naturalistic, except for one really glaring exception, like Lojban. It tries to be a logical language. It, by the way, is computer parsable. It's crazy. Anyway, there's also stuff that's not really a conlang per se. We don't really think of them that way, but they actually have pretty constructed elements to them. Look these all up on Wikipedia or ask me afterwards. Uh, they're all pretty cool at cases. So you might be wondering, how do I make one? Well, um, first off, you have to decide what the hell you're going for. There's lots and lots of choices. I suggest you just look at what other people have done, and that'll give you some idea. Whoa. Okay, good. So let's pretend we are making a language for an imaginary species named the Drushik, and uh, they have no vocal cords. So, for example, they cannot say the letter D. They cannot um, do normal vowels. All vowels are vocalized in English, uh, pretty much. So... What can we do? We can do all those things. So we can do stuff like that. Um, in fact, we can put those in the middle of a symbol, syllable. So um, we could make an orthography for it. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, most people actually don't bother making an orthography any more complicated than a simple romanization. It does pretty well. But if you want to be hardcore, there's lots of ways to do it. Morphosyntax basically means how you take things and put words in a sentence, and within a word, how you form that word. Those are three examples. You're welcome to ask me afterwards. The third one is Hawaii, and the first one is Japanese. Um, so once you have a basic structure for your language, you try to translate something. The most uh, well-used one right now is the Babel text from Genesis. No, we're not Christians. Well, some of us are, but... Uh, it's just because it's about the proliferation of languages. So it's sort of culturally um, relevant. But realistically speaking, it's not a step-by-step -step process. It's very much an agile process, uh, for those of you who are into that. Uh, you just do it and do it and do it, and you keep changing it. Then hopefully you tell someone else about it so that we can learn and laugh at you or uh, give you props or whatever. Um, that language I just described actually exists. If you want to hear a sample of it, I'll be happy to play it. Um, what am I into? I'm into two main things, nonlinear languages uh, and gripping language that I'm developing with Alex over there. It's done with the hands. Uh, I also do a podcast. I've run three conferences, uh, and we've got books in progress. If you want to look up stuff online, there's that. Um, those are two books that are out really recently. Both of them are really, really good. Uh, Okrant in particular has been getting a lot of press lately. If you go to our website, uh, you'll see all the stuff on that page, press.php. So that is it. Any questions?
Okay. Um, so I do two things. Uh, one is a uh, non-linear writing system. Uh, right now I'm mostly involved in the top-down design, but there's a guy called Skylar Devine who's done a pretty awesome example of it. If you go to oe.org, you'll see it. Uh, you can download my sides later if you don't want to look up the links. Nonlinear means that uh, in normal writing systems, what you can essentially do is think of them as an array of arbitrary symbols, right? The, the, um, the placement of the symbols on the page is completely irrelevant to the meaning of the language. However, this is a very poor use of the fact that we have a two-dimensional writing surface for a written language. Now, there, you can argue about really, really barely exceptions like Korean or Egyptian uh, or stuff like that, but I don't really think they count. A nonlinear language is more like a graph than a ray. Uh, if you go to oe.org, on the front page, you'll see an excellent example of what I mean. My other uh, language that I'm developing with Alex over there is called a gripping language. We don't really have a, la a name for it yet, but it's uh, transmitted entirely by grip that is like this. Do, 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 do. Um, sorry? Uh, potentially, yes. Uh, we're doing it because we're a couple and we just sort of felt it'd be cool. We're both conlangers. Um, and it's more for sort of having a private language to have between ourselves. Um, there are potential applications for uh, uh, blind deaf people. Uh, what they currently use mostly is um, ASL, in America at least, uh, with uh, the blind person holding the other person's hand. Uh, but there are a lot of systems. Um, ours is basically transmitted entirely by touch and meant to be uh, basically undetectable. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I <laughs> uh, I do try to be cunning at times. Um, I am not a linguist. Uh, my degree is in cognitive science. Um, but I am a conlanger, uh, and uh, I know a little bit more about linguistics than uh, your average geek. Any other questions? No. Thank you very much.